An innovative ship holds the key to the sustainability and renewal of the Dutch North Sea fishing industry. The pilot vessel, designed as part of the Master Plan for Sustainable Fisheries, the MSF, gives the flat fish sector hope. In June 2015, after a project period of five years, the brand new pilot vessel set sail for the first time on the North Sea. Let's go back to the beginning of this century, a period of high fuel prices, lower quotas and shrinking fish stocks. After a period of prosperity, the Dutch fishing industry entered a downward spiral of decline from the year 2000. Urk-based fishermen Hendrik Romkus and Hendrik Kramer have been hit hard by this decline. Nou ja, in 2000 uh, we waren eigenlijk het laatste goed jaar in de visserij gehad. The year 2000 was effectively the last good year for the fishing industry. After that, things went gradually downhill. The biggest problem for the fishing industry was the increase in the price of diesel, which made it really tough for companies to keep going. In 2007, these problems got much worse, and in 2011 and 2012, we hit rock bottom. There was just no money to be made from fishing anymore. After 2006, advisors and accountants Flint take the initiative and organize a number of meetings in an effort to improve the situation in the fishing industry. The Working Group on the Restructuring of the Sea Fishing Industry was set up and the Smart Business Knowledge Network, Kenniskring Slim Ondernemer, looked into potential improvements in the fishing industry. While this was a step in the right direction, it was essentially a short-term solution and would not be enough to restore the profitability of the companies operating in the fishing industry. The fishing industry set to work on a radical solution to the problem at a meeting of the Smart Business Knowledge Network in 2009. Why don't we ask Brussels for 400 million euros and use it to build 100 new vessels? The solution gave new impetus to the plans. Auke Hoefnagel from Flint Advisors and Accountants launched a partnership between Flint, the Research Institute LEI, the Smart Business Knowledge Network, Shipbuilding Netherlands and the Municipality of Urk. The partnership was signed and sealed at Hotel van der Valk at Schiphol. The master plan for the transformation of the Dutch fishing fleet was born. This subsequently became known as the Master Plan for Sustainable Fisheries. Waar het om gaat, is het scheppen van randvoorwaarden voor de opbouw van een nieuwe vissersvloot. Creating the right conditions for the building of a new fishing fleet, the standardization of new vessels capable of employing a number of different fishing techniques, smaller vessels, economically and environmentally sustainable fishing and new catch techniques in addition to trawling for sole. That, in a nutshell, is what MSF is. At the heart of MSF is the design of a new vessel and the migration of the fleet to this new design. The Master Plan for Sustainable Fisheries has four phases – focus group survey, feasibility study, pilot phase and transition phase. The sealing of the partnership at Schiphol officially launched the first phase of the study into the feasibility of a complete transformation of the fishing fleet. In the first phase, the five partners gauged the level of support among stakeholders in the fishing industry. Inquiries into the level of support among stakeholders quickly revealed that the fishing industry also believed that drastic action was required. These inquiries were immediately followed in 2010 by a study into the feasibility of such a major transformation. This study involved six working groups focusing around the themes of government and policy, technology, funding, use of existing vessels, sustainability and, subsequently, the Pilot Vessel Working Group. The results of the feasibility study were positive. Uit de Report drawn up, 70% fuel saving possible. The key recommendations are creation of a pilot vessel, upgrading of fleet is essential, establish knowledge sharing structure.
having outlined potential innovations in phases one and two of the master plan for sustainable fisheries from 2011 the working group on technology set to work on the development of new concepts for fishing vessels a number of innovative concepts were developed and in february 2012 phase three of the msf project began the aim was to create a sustainable vessel that used 70 to 80 percent less fuel than a conventional cutter that was easy to maintain and that fished in an environmentally sustainable way. A vessel which would allow fishermen to earn a decent living once again. The management of MSF looked for contractors to join the project and build and run the pilot vessel. The basic requirements were clear. The vessel must consume no more than 7,000 litres of fuel a week and must cost no more than 4 million euros. In September 2013, a national meeting on the fishing industry was held under the title An Offer You Can't Refuse. Prospective contractors had to submit their ideas for a pilot vessel to MSF by the 31st of December 2013 at the latest. Three plans were submitted, including those of Kramer and Romkus, the contractors who entered into a partnership. On behalf of the MSF management, K. Stahl from the research institute LEI applied pressure to the proceedings during an MSF meeting in February 2014. Either we will deploy true fisheries innovations or withdraw our application for a grant. At that point, the Ministry of Economic Affairs had issued a grant. The contractors had been selected. The bank was positive. But was the project innovative enough? The shipyard, which was ultimately given the task of designing the innovative pilot vessel, was Scheepswerf Patmos of Stellendam, which, together with Hoekman and the contractors, is responsible for the current design. The joint proposal from Hendrik Kramer and Hendrik Romkes, supported by Hoekman Shipbuilding and Patmos, was selected by MSF in February of that year. Hoekman was appointed lead contractor. The innovation pillars previously formulated with the Ministry of Economic Affairs now encompassed all kinds of innovative technologies, including a highly innovative diesel-electric propulsion system, a new twin-rig pulse method, alternative and sustainable materials, a low-energy line plan, various energy-saving measures and an innovative, commercially viable catch processing line. Hoekman, Patmos and Elektro Westhofer from Outdorp were jointly responsible for the development of the diesel-electric propulsion system. We worked on a capacity of 400 kW. A 3 meter diameter screw allowed us to utilize this capacity as efficiently as possible. We started by drawing a large screw on a blank sheet of paper, and we progressed from there. The solution we proposed for the diesel-electric propulsion system was totally different from the solutions proposed by the other parties involved. We planned to do something that effectively had never been done before. A technique and a variable speed generator, which generates power to propel the vessel and also for the vessel as a whole. As far as propulsion is concerned, our objective was optimum efficiency. The innovative shipyards Patmos and Hoekman started talking in 2014. They got talking to each other when Patmos was selected as supplier of the twin rig pulse fishing technology. With this method, the fishing gear effectively floats over the seabed and the fish are encouraged to swim into the net by means of electrical pulses. Moreover, the nets don't hang on both sides of the vessel, but rather behind it. This method of fishing has significantly less impact on the seabed. It also uses less energy and consequently requires less fuel. The most significant innovation from Patmos is the shape of the hull, developed in partnership with KME, with its yacht-like bow and whale-like shape. 
het, 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 het doel van, hele, van het hele kasko ontwerp was natuurlijk om een, om een... The aim of the hull design was of course to develop a hull with the lowest possible resistance and the lowest possible fuel consumption, but which also moved as smoothly as possible through the water. We also had to create a vessel that people could live and work on. And there had to be enough conditioned storage room for the fish and enough room to work. A memorable moment on Friday the 22nd of August 2014. In the afternoon of that day, the keel of the master plan for sustainable fisheries pilot vessel was installed by Costco and Sexybouw Rotterdam BV. Following the launch, the hull was transported to Urk on Saturday the 31st of January 2014. It's great to see all the innovations being implemented on the MDV-1 pilot vessel in the finishing stages. As well as the diesel-electric propulsion system, Electro Westhoeve is responsible for the low-energy LED lighting and pump controls, the pulse system, and the innovative climate control system. We have the ship uitgevoerd met an accumulator. We have a buffer tank containing 5,000 liters of water. This water is heated by the diesel engine's cooling water system. It's used to heat the vessel as well as to control the heating of the tap water for the vessel. The technical innovations on the MSF vessel are not only about cutting costs. Quality is also an important factor here, the aim being to process the catch and get it into the fish hold as quickly as possible. Keeping this time to a minimum improves the quality of the fish. A company called VCU is responsible for the vessel's catch processing line. One innovation is that the fish are sorted by size on board the vessel. Dit schip passen we voor het eerst de VCU Marine Grade toe. Een volledig geautomatiseerde sorteer. We are installing an automatic VCU Marine Grader in this vessel, a fully automated sorting facility. This is a unique feature of the project. The fish is immediately sorted by size on board. This saves money. The main thing is that the fish has been sorted by size before being crated, on ice, chilled. And the fish doesn't have to come out again. 
so the cooling chain is no longer interrupted. When processing the catch, VCU uses slurry ice, which chills the fish to zero degrees in half an hour. VCU is also fitting the vessel with a state-of-the-art catch management system and a system for separating non-saleable fish from saleable fish. That way the non-saleable fish have a greater chance of survival. The place gutting machine is an equally impressive innovation in the catch processing line. It plays a crucial role in keeping the time it takes for the fish to reach the fish hold to a minimum. The machine is guaranteed to process 1500 plates an hour to the same standard of quality. A fair amount of place is being caught at the moment. This means that crew members are having to spend large amounts of time gutting the fish. Over the course of the week, the quality of this stripping deteriorates. With a machine, you don't have that problem. The machine always strips the same quantity of fish in exactly the same way. The quality of the gutting is fantastic. And this also means that the fillet yield is good. That's what we're aiming for. Running parallel with the technical development of the MDV-1 pilot vessel are the financing arrangements for the vessel. Wilbert de Olde and Philip ten Napel from de Olde and ten Napel Consultancy have been instrumental from the preliminary phase to phase 3 of the project in liaising with the various government bodies to find out whether the vessel is eligible for grants. We've been so busy getting everything sorted, especially with respect to the government. The plan must be right and the innovations you're proposing must be acceptable and sufficiently innovative. That alone has taken us a year. In de subsidieaanvraag was uh, het voornaamste discussiepunt het schip zelf. De overheid geeft namelijk subsidies op basis van, uh, van twee belangrijke... The vessel itself was the focal point of the discussion. The government cites two main criteria for fisheries grants. The stimulation of innovation and the promotion of collaboration. We constantly had to prove that the vessel was innovative. Dat vraagt natuurlijk, uh, this requires patience and more specifically a great many meetings in The Hague and Brussels. There was a huge sense of joy and relief when the go-ahead was given. In 2013, it became clear that the Master Plan for Sustainable Fisheries was eligible for the 2 million euro innovation grant, of which almost half a million could be used to fund the entire MSF process. This was a good start to the funding of the 4 million euro costs. The rest of the funding would come from the two contractors who, in February 2014, concluded a partnership for the operation of the pilot vessel, Hendrik Romkus and Hendrik Kramer. The two of them joined the project with a clear objective. I ben erin gestapt omdat ik gewoon ik ik geloof er gewoon helemaal in. En uh, op het I got involved because I stand right behind the plan. Luckily things are going better for the fishing industry at the moment, but there's still a long way to go. If the industry is to be viable in the long term, we have to invest. MSF asked Flint advisors and accountants to prepare a business case, which formed the basis of an application for funding from the bank. Time was of the essence, because once funding had been obtained, the vessel still had to be built, and there had to be time in 2015 to trial the MDV-1. Bearing in mind the European Fisheries Fund stipulation that the project must be completed by the 31st of December 2015. In March 2014, funding was obtained for the pilot project. Als Rabobank zijn we al heel lang betrokken bij de visserijsector, maar dit project is inderdaad wel heel bijzonder. At Rabobank, we've been involved in the fishery sector for a very long time. But this project is very special indeed. That's because the MDV ship represents a completely new way of fishing, an entirely new project. Of course, as a bank, you rely on the knowledge of a sector, in this case the fishery sector, that you have built up over the years. Although we do have a great deal of knowledge in this area, this project is so innovative that the decision to fund it depends above all on the faith we have in the people driving it and in the idea behind it. 
On the one hand, that makes it very exciting. But as a bank, and especially as a local Rabobank, we stand for innovation and we stand behind the sector. So that's why we felt we had to say yes to this. It was an historic moment when first the ship's bell and then the ship's horn sounded on June 5, 2015. The Horn of Hope sounded when the vessel was handed over by lead contractor Hoekman Shipbuilding to the owners and users of the MDV-1. The master plan for Sustainable Fisheries Foundation, Hendrik Kramer and Hendrik Romkes. Speaking on behalf of the MSF Foundation, Alke Hoefnagel looked back at the process thus far. The dot on the horizon has gotten closer, but we aren't there yet. Let us continue to support each other in achieving that goal, that final goal. That is the crux of the matter. I thank you all. This much is clear. The commissioning of the pilot vessel is not the end of the road. In fact, the vessel symbolizes a new start. Not least the start of phase four, the transformation of the fishing fleet. Het ministerie denkt dat dit een heel belangrijk project voor de sector is, omdat, uh, ja, omdat we het denk ik ook. The ministry believes this is a very important project for the industry because at the end of the day, what we really need is brand new concepts and brand new techniques. And that's always the case. Innovation comes in all shapes and sizes. And for me, this is like a kind of grand, all-encompassing innovation, where everything is looked at in a new light, and everything thought through one more time, even down to the coffee machine. I believe the chances of realizing the desired transformation are pretty good. When you see how much thought has been put into this, and how many people are involved in this project, both in the fishing industry and beyond, I think to myself, if this doesn't work, what will? We are currently working on creating the conditions to ensure that ultimately individual contractors can be converted in this transition phase on the basis of this one pilot project. To do this, it must be possible to dismantle the old existing setup financially and to finance the new one. Projects and transitions of this type are complex, long-term projects and, in financial terms in particular, there must be an adequate base of own funds in order to be able to attract external investors. What I do hope, however, is that we can help the fishing industry define a new approach. I realize that sometimes you have to finish one thing before you can start another. That is a task that the industry must tackle. It's not only the fishing contractors who are following the pilot with the MSF vessel with keen interest. In the transport industry, sustainable thinking is gaining importance, with the focus on partnership and the environment. Urk-based company Brouwer Transport has been transporting fish for 40 years and would be happy to see the MSF project applied more widely. I'd like to see fisheries in the Netherlands and Europe working more closely with partners in order to deliver the product to the consumer's table as efficiently and as sustainably as possible.
all the partners involved are looking forward to the results of the pilot phase of the MDV-1. This pilot phase, in which is invested 760,000 euros from the Zuiderzee Line Fund for Economic Regeneration, is reserved for tests, research, refinement of the twin rig pulse method, and knowledge sharing. Does the vessel live up to expectations when it comes to fuel consumption? Are all the innovations doing what they're meant to be doing? Does the twin rig pulse method lead to good catches? Everyone involved has high expectations. We put them up in the business case of papier. That's when we put what's in the business case to the test. Here, communication with all the parties involved is very important, and knowledge sharing is crucial. The industry as a whole must be able to learn from our experiences. This is essential if the fleet is to be transformed. We've been working with the vessel for a year now and we've seen all the innovations already. We're pretty much used to them. But as I always say, we have a great concept, but what we have to do now is put it into practice. Expectations are high and now we have to live up to them.